Hi, guys. I got to ask about the sweatshirt because you were not a loser. So I'm wondering, what, is, there, is there a meaning behind this sweatshirt? You don't like it? No, I like it. I'm just curious what, what, so what's the story? Uh, it's just a cool sweater. You, you're not worried you're giving yourself a, a jinx? No, no, not at all. It should, it's just a sweater, but um, yeah, just it's a funny play on words. So speaking of that undefeated record, does it, does the pressure get worse as your record builds and builds and builds? Or is it a little bit less because now you're kind of comfortable with winning? Uh, I think it lessens because I'm comfortable with winning. And um, you've seen a lot of my fights or people that have know that I've faced a lot of adver adversity and I have lost rounds. I have lost some street fights. So um, I know how to lose and come back. Uh, and I know this is going to sound like a silly question because nobody wants to lose, but there's always that saying that when you lose, you learn something. So are, is there any fear that, you know, this might be too easy for you and you aren't going to improve because you're not being tested? Or do you feel like you are being tested even in those wins? No, I think I'm being tested. Um, and I, I lose all the time in the training room. So that that's where I get a lot of my lessons. Um, and I've lost a lot throughout life. But... Um, you know, my, I wasn't super happy with my last performance, but I think I really got tested with my last opponent because it was just like a stylistic nightmare for me. And I still came out with the win, so. Do you also think that maybe people like us pay attention, too much attention to that record, be, having the undefeated record? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of frauds that are undefeated. Like, I think there's a lot of guys that, you know, haven't been tested. So I, I always understand the suspicion and I am beatable. Everybody is, but um, you got to look at the regional scene because I'm only one to know in the UFC. Can you talk to me a little bit about your opponent? What are you expecting from him? Um, I expect a dog fight, um, and I expect him to be pretty durable, and I think we're going to have to go into some really deep waters to get a definitive winner. Were you excited when you got the name, or was it a little lip? Yeah, super excited. I had a couple choices, and I picked him like in a heartbeat. Can you tell us who the other choices were? I don't even remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just didn't like, yeah. I was like, eh, those guys aren't going to bring it as hard. And you said you, you think it's going to be a dog fight. Do you feel like it's going to go the full three rounds? Uh, I, it definitely could, but I don't think so. I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident the way that both of us fight, it's going to be, um, there's going to be a lot of strikes thrown and we're going to clash a lot. So I, I think one of us is going to get put out one way or another. And I, I know most people don't want to look too far past their opponent, but do you have goals for this year that you've already set for yourself? Now, if I'm healthy, I'd like to compete uh, once or twice more at least and uh, do some traveling and enjoy myself. Is there like a, a venue you'd particularly like to fight in? Yeah, I'd like to fight in an arena. I'd, I've never even been to a UFC event. The only ones I've been to are mine, so I don't really have any context, but I'd like to uh, fight for a crowd. Is there a reason you haven't been to a fight? Because I've heard some fighters say they don't want to go until it's their fight, or it just hasn't happened. No, it just hasn't happened. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Payne, just a quick, quick one. Uh, what do you think of Sean O'Malley's win at, at UFC 299? That was impressive. I... I knew he was going to win, but I didn't think he was going to look that great um, or just as good as he did. But um, I don't know how Cheeto, Cheeto stayed standing up. But he, his movement and everything has just gotten a lot better, and he just put a showcase on how much he's improved. Thanks, man. Yeah. Peyton, uh, I just want to ask, you know, you now you're at that point. You had your first UFC fight. It seems like the promotion's pushing you really hard. Has your, changed, has your life changed in any type of way? I know you're still training getting beat up by your training partners at times, but uh, have you noticed anything different about your life? No, not, not too much. I feel like I prioritize my career more and I've definitely put a lot of more time into that as well as just like expression of what I want to put out on the internet and everything, but everything else has pretty much been the same. Have you had anybody, you know, at the supermarket or anything and they're like, hey, are you Peyton Talbot? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. was that happening before the UFC or? No, not really. It was you, after my first win is when it's uh, gotten a lot more. Like, there's just been more people that notice me, but yeah. 
And is this something, you know, you, you think about a lot when one day, you know, the, the big money does come, the fame, you know, not, not to really lose yourself in this process? Uh, a little bit. I mean, the money is going to change me. Like, I'll just <laughs> tell you right now. Like, but I'm, I'll still be myself and I'll have my core values and try to compete as much as possible. But um, I'm not worried about it. I don't think I'm going to change into a terrible person. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's kind of hard to not change a little bit when you got cool cars and clothes eventually, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. What was the first thing that you're going to buy when you realize you've arrived money-wise? Like, oh, when I can buy a Ferrari, I'm, I'm set, or a yacht or something? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Maybe property or a cyber truck or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's something I can have fun with.